Let's do a little thought experiment here. Suppose there's a physics textbook lying on the table. Now, as it's laying on the table, we know that it has the force of gravity acting downward on it and has the same size normal force acting up on it. And this textbook is laying on the table and I walk into the room and immediately I see this textbook and of course I just have this delight for anything that has to do with physics. So I pick up this textbook and I'm about to walk away with it and you walk in the door behind me. And as you walk in the door and your eyes light on this same physics textbook, this craving for anything physics overcomes you and you just, you want to have that physics textbook so badly that you try to grab it out of my hands. Now, there's a bunch of forces acting on this textbook. I do not want to let it go. So, I am pulling hard on this textbook with all my might, with the force, uh, we'll call it the force of the teacher. And you are pulling very, very hard the other way also with all of your might, but yeah, unfortunately your might is not quite as strong as mine, so you are pulling a little bit smaller of a vector here, the force of the student. Well, lucky for you, your friend comes in behind you and your friend walks in and sees the momentous struggle that is going on over this textbook and realizes just how important this would be and he becomes desperate to help you. So he latches hold on the textbook and he also pulls in the same direction as you with a force, we'll call it the force of your friend. So if we assume that for this example that right, the direction right is positive, then there's three, well there's, there's actually five forces acting on this. The force of the teacher, I'm pulling with a force of 89 newtons on this textbook. We have the force of the student, and you're pulling with a force of 67 newtons in the opposite direction, so let's make that negative. And then your friend who comes to help you is pulling in the, also the negative direction with a force of 63 newtons. What I want to determine is the force, the net force acting on this textbook, as well as the acceleration. And I'm going to add one more piece of information. Let's say this textbook weighs 2.2 kilograms. So we need to determine the average force and the acceleration of this textbook. Well, first of all, I did not tell you a specific number for the force of gravity or for the normal force. We could calculate the force of gravity because we know that's just mass times acceleration. But we know that the normal force and the force of gravity cancel each other out. So there is no net up and down force. There's only a net side to side force. So to calculate that net side to side force, we're going to add up all the forces that there are. So that's the force of the teacher, we have the force of the student, and we have the force of the friend. Force of the teacher was 89 newtons. Force of the student was negative 67 newtons. And the force of the friend was negative 63 newtons. So 89 minus 67 minus 63 means that there's a net force of 41 newtons acting on this textbook. So negative 41 newtons. Negative because it's in the direction, unfortunately for me, of the students. So the students are gaining the upper hand here. They're managing to gain control of this textbook and they have the superior force of 41 newtons on their side. Now we also were asked to calculate the acceleration of the textbook. So for acceleration, for most of our problems related to this, we're going to be using this formula of F equals MA. We know the net force, so now we're, we're going to be using the net force acting on this object, which is negative 41 newtons is equal to the mass of this textbook, which is 2.2 kilograms times the acceleration of this textbook. So if we do 40 negative 41 and we divide that by 2.2 kilograms we get negative 18.63 for our acceleration. Now we should get meters per second squared because newtons, kilograms, meters per second squared is what works out in this equation because the newtons was a derived unit from kilograms and meters per second squared. Let's just correct our number of sig figs and make this a negative 
19 meters per second squared. So the textbook is moving in the direction of the students at 19 meters per second squared, uh, accelerating I should say at 19 meters per second squared. The type of problems that you're going to need to be able to do in this section are usually based around this formula F equals MA. Sometimes you might need to add a few masses together. In this example I had to add a few forces together to get the net mass.